So uh, some words about me. Uh, I live in Lund in Sweden. I'm working in Sony since 2011. Uh, main areas I'm responsible for in a company are performance, power safe, thermal, uh, for mobile devices and for mobile workloads. Uh, apart of that, I'm doing RCU uh, together with community. And also I am working with MM. So let me start with a problem. So basically, uh, when we uh, try to manage a VMAP space, uh, a global VMAP space, uh, we do uh, we have three global data structures, and uh, those three uh, global data structures are protected by uh, three spin logs, uh, global spin logs. So let me go one by one to explain a little bit about them. Uh, so first of all, uh, the first one is a, a free VMAP area log. Uh, so actually this log protects uh, an access to a global uh, free VMAP space when we allocate and when we deallocate, so we need it. Uh, then we have a, a VMAP area log. Uh, that log uh, actually deals with uh, bookkeeping data when we uh, uh, so it's actually mapped data, or also we call it busy areas. And last one, uh, last one is a perch VMAP error log. Uh, this one is supposed to be used when we access to lazily freed areas. Uh, what is also separate global data, data structure. So if we summarize, <clears throat> we can conclude that uh, all these spin, uh, three spin logs uh, protect three different data structure and are a bottleneck for a system with uh, many CPUs. So if you have a, a single CPU system, then I guess it's not a problem for you. So, so next slide is about, let me go, uh, let me talk about, uh, about this in more detail. So access the allocated bookkeeping data. On the right side, you see uh, map it errors. It's a data structure. Basically, it consists of linked list and then it consists of RB3. So here in the middle, you have a VMAP error log. And, they, and here on the top, you see users. So it's basically CPU who invokes our APIs like v3, uh, vmalloc, and so on, alloc VMAP error, and so on. And uh, this is a bottleneck when it comes to bootkeeping, bootkeeping data because uh, each CPU has to wait each other in order to accomplish any request. So this is a problem, number one. So why we need, uh, why we need this tree and why we need this uh, bookkeeping data? First of all, we need it in order to find um, an address uh, that, uh, that belongs to a particular VMAP area. When we when we are going to free, for example, also we need it because uh, we would like to uh, make a dump of mapped errors over Vimalloc info. So, user if user would like to understand what kind of mapped errors we have in the system, so we basically do cut proc Vimalloc info, and then you get it. And uh, at least uh, last reason is uh, when we need to generate a kernel dump when we run into uh, some panic or crash dump, we would like to include map it, uh, map it map data into that dump. So it's a kcore.c. So this is a problem for first global data structure. Then we go to next. Same here on the right side, you see a picture. So basically it's a high level picture and high level description because I don't want to go into deep detail uh, because we will lose focus. So that's why I try to simplify it as much as I can. So on the bottom, we have a global free VMAP space. Uh, then we have uh, another spin log that protects this uh, second global data. The name is uh, free VMAP area log. Here we have also users. Uh, we have four users, for example. And uh, you can see that uh, access is not serialized at all. Everything goes uh, through one single log. And uh, each CPUs or each user who deal with uh, which deal with global VMAP, uh, VMAP space 
uh, have to wait uh, each other in order to, to solve some request. Uh, what we can conclude is that uh, such approach is not scalable to number of CPUs at all. And last one, it's about uh, these guys about lazily freed areas on the right side, similar picture. Here we have uh, lazily freed areas. It's the last one, it's a third one, um, uh, global big data. And here we have a parch VMAP area lock. Uh, that protects access to this data. Here we also have our users and, and we have similar situation, exactly the same situation. So basically uh, we, we can summarize that simultaneous free or allocation is a problem as not, and, and is not scaled to number of CPUs. So let me uh, a little bit summarize. On the left side, uh, you see a lock pass here. Yeah. On the right side, we see you see a free pass. Uh, in case of allocation pass, we need to access at least two global data structures. First one is a free VMAP area uh, route, uh, so where we allocate from. Once we get a VA from that global heap, uh, we have to uh, place it, uh, place that VA into bookkeeping data. Uh, that is uh, that, as, uh, that is as associated with the global mapped areas. So, and that data is protected by the map area lock. So it's a bookkeeping data. On a V3 pass, uh, we need to access also bookkeeping data when we try to find find an address in within bookkeeping tree. Uh, then try to find an address that is associated with a VA, unlink it, and then we can uh, we can pass it uh, into um, push the map area tree, and that tree is protected by another spin lock. So here is number one, number two, and number three, three global data structure. And what we can conclude that these three uh, global data structures cannot be accessed concurrently. And this is the main problem that I'm talking about. Oh, may I ask some question? Yes. Oh, so, yeah, as you said, the global log and data structure is not that scalable, but on which workload do you see the contention most on VMAP or VMAP side? Uh, at least I see contention uh, when I do my, uh, when I run my, uh, my performance test. Then uh, I know that uh, XFS people um, who is working with XFS file system, they see contention uh, on uh, under their workloads. So, and they would like to have a maximum throughput of the Mala code. So at least we know XFS as of now. Oh, sure, thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, on this plot, uh, I would like to show you Vimalak scalability. So basically, basically what we have on X axis, we have, uh, we have number of threads. We have starting from one until 32. And then uh, on Y axis, we have a throughput rate. It's a Vimalak V3 pair. And the time is in microseconds. We measure the time. I run a Vimalak test suite on my AMD 32 physical CPU systems. That's why I have 32, uh, 32 threads. So if we have a look at single thread performance, so we, uh, we, we approximately, on my system, we approximately need uh, two microseconds. It's pretty small, of course. Uh, if we have a look at 32 uh, threads application, uh, we need approximately 50 microseconds. And please note that I'm doing it on a super powerful computer. And uh, what we can conclude that it's the difference is approximately 25 times. In theory, we can uh, improve it. I mean, throughput around 25 times in theory. On practice, I don't think so. So you can see it go exponentially and through, through, throughput, uh, the time is uh, the time gets increased once you get uh, 
iterate one by one. And here I would like to show you, uh, on this plot, I would like to show you a log stat uh, because I wanted to understand a, a log contention within VMAP, uh, VMAP uh, layer or VMAP layer. On the right side, blue line, it's a VMAP error log. Then we have a, a free VMAP error log. And then we have parched VMAP, VMAP, VMAP error log. Uh, on X axis, we have number of jobs running the test. And on Y, uh, we have a, a number of contentions. So uh, as you can see, the biggest contention is on VMAP error log. And uh, it's uh, due to a lot of uh, lot lot lots of uh, fragments, because Z3 is not uh, we don't merge any data in Z3, uh, and this tree is responsible for or this lock is responsible for protecting uh, bookkeeping uh, tree or data. Uh, other two locks have much lower contention because of uh, this guy and this guy. We uh, we use uh, merging techniques in order to. Uh, minimize fragmentation. So uh, what we can conclude is that VMAP error log is five times has five times higher contention than other twos. So uh, the same test, uh, the same uh, uh, the same num number of CPUs and, and the same hardware, like on previous. Now let me <clears throat> now let me talk. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> now let me talk about a uh, proposal. So I would like to propose uh, a new pure CPU cache uh, to, mitig to mitigate contention. <clears throat> to mitigate contention. So basically, what I would like to propose, uh, I would like to add pure CPU cache. So first step is introducing pure CPU cache. Then uh, we need to prefetch a cache from a global VMAP heap when it becomes empty or when, it's, when, when it is empty initially. Uh, the cache size can be configured via kernel boot parameter or it can be uh, changed in runtime, but I think it's, uh, it's a bit tough and it's not so easy, but it's not, it's not decided. And then afterward, uh, on a high level, uh, fourth step, the cache is the cached block or uh, prefetched block um, chunk block is e split based on location request. So it's basically clipping. So we clip the cache. So this picture is more in detail what I'm going to propose. Yeah, uh, let me start uh, from the bottom. Here we have a, a VMAP space, or just starting from zero until unsigned loan max. So CPU one, CPU zero, and CPU two, uh, it's a just users. So we can say it's a user one, user zero, user two. So as a first step for CPU number one, when we do, for example, VMALOC, CPU number one, uh, check its own cache, this. If it's empty, we do a simple prefetch. So we actually access to global VMAP heap to take a to take a chunk with fixed size. After that, when we do a prefetch, we can allocate directly from uh, we can allocate directly from P per CPU. In this scenario, you can see 20, 22, 35. It's a just start start addresses. Once we uh, allocated from the cache, we need to place AVA into book, book, bookkeeping data. The question is how to convert the address to uh, correct bookkeep, bookkeeping data, because it's also per CPU. After this approach, it will be per CPU. So we use address to CPU map zone, and we use simple formula here on the bottom to make a correct conversion to understand where 20, 22, 35 as the addresses belong to what kind of zone, number of zone. You see it belongs to number number one. Apparently we just prefetch it and then we identify that it's number one. 
Once we identify the zone, it's number one. We go to your CPU number one, bookkeeping data, take a look, and then insert, and then do a simple per CPU insert. Same story with CPU number zero or uh, user number zero. Uh, we need to check the local cache, per CPU cache, this CPU cache. If it's empty, we do a simple prefetch. On this picture, you see that it's a prefetch from CPU number two or uh, zona number two. Uh, then uh, as a next step, we need to do a simple conversion according to this formula. Uh, take a look of CPU number two and insert into bookkeeping data of CPU number two. And please note this, this, it's, uh, this one, uh, this uh, actually, uh, this is uh, pure CPU. And let's consider another uh, last one. It's a CPU number two or user number two. Uh, same way, uh, if cache is not empty, allocate uh, 60, convert to uh, CPU, uh, pure CPU, bookkeeping data, it's number zero, inserted. So this basically is it. Uh, please note that uh, fetch size, fetch size uh, can be, as I explained before, we can configure fetch size uh, either by passing uh, as a kernel parameter or by another way. We haven't decided yet. And this size is fixed. And based uh, based on that. Based on that, that we know that fixed size, uh, we know this fixed size, we can identify easily the zone. So, um, I, will go. I have a question. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, Vlad, I, I was wondering, uh, this so this whole VMAP, uh, VMALOC thing, it, it looks very similar to, uh, you know, uh, user space map virtual, virtual address space. Uh, you know, VMA, VMA structs. Like, so can we mm -hmm. not use the, so I believe that's lock, that's lockless now or going in that direction. It seems like it's very similar, the problem. Like, it's it's almost the same. So can we not use like Maple Tree and RCU and do this sort of concurrency instead of, instead of what you're proposing? Is there like a reason that won't work? Um, so basically when it comes to Maple Tree, and all guys, all those guys. Uh, the problem is that we, the problem is not in data structure. I am not sure how Maple Tree is uh, when it comes to civilization, and uh, I am not sure how it performs uh, when, for example, we need uh, many parallel or simultaneous insert and removing. And uh, it's a one point. Second point, I guess it's quite heavy, and it's still under development. Oh, and uh, also I checked uh, different kind of uh, B trees and so on. And the problem is in, in is not in uh, uh, another data structure like Maple Tree or B tree, because uh, RB tree performs quite well. As uh, a problem with serialization, and this is a problem, the biggest problem. Did you answer your question? Uh, can we go back a couple slides to the locking, please? So in that graph, uh, is it fair to say that the blue line, the area lock, is being used for both operations of the free and the purge? No, uh, blue line, uh, it's, uh, it's basically, uh, yes, right. You're right. It's V3. Uh, sorry. So we're talking about this, right? Plot. Blue one. Yeah, yes, yeah, the blue. A, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a pair of uh, VMALOC and V3. So uh, V3 does porch. Yes. I will right. explain so, later. Yeah. yeah. So if you could mark them as being purged but not free in the tree, uh, would you need another tree? Like right now you have three trees if you if you go back another slide i think uh no another one sorry so here you have 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. So here you have the free, you have the ones that are allocated, and the ones that you want to free. Yeah. Right. Um, and yeah. and so each one of these trees has its own lock, and each operation needs to use the area root one. So if you could just not modify that in one of these paths, then you could potentially reduce your contention. Uh, in theory, it can be. But the problem is that, uh, for example, when we are talking about bookkeeping tree, we need to uh, anyway uh, protect it in a way somehow because we need to access it. So basically, we need to do a traversal. So either we can use kind of read lock, of course, but then we can modify. Uh, but still, uh, uh, we end up in contention anyway. And uh, the, idea, the problem is that uh, we are not serialized. Because, um, and this is the main problem. Uh, potentially, yes. And it could improve, yes, like you say. But it will not improve uh, perfectly. Because we still have a lot of room for improvement. And uh, from my point of view, ideal improvement is when we do a kind of serialization as much as we can. Right. So you could greatly reduce your, your blue line by only marking them. Uh, let me see. You have a free list, you have the to be free list, and you have a used list. So if you were to mark something yeah. not free, but also not used, then you could get rid of the yellow line, and the free and the regular. Uh, the used would be closer to what you want. Yeah, yeah. but then you end up in contention uh, uh, with a contention on another line, like for example, red. Yeah, but you cut it and in it half. will be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might. Like you say, yes, we can we can improve. Yes, but I'm not sure. Uh, I I'm, I can't say right away uh, that it's uh, what you propose is a. Uh, is a way to is a way is a way uh, like straightforward way. So yeah, it might so, be that I I miss I miss something. Yeah, so we have kind of the the same sort of problem in the VMAs, where we have we have these VMAs and we need to track a free and and a not free space, and then we're going and we're going to uh, RCU free them, which would be kind of like your purge here. And so there's a lot of parallels to what you're doing to what we're trying to solve in the VMA space. And, and, and then when you get into the zoning and, and the per CPU, uh, it, it's what we've been discussing this week on what we want, <laughs> where we want to go um, in, in the same area. So it's very interesting to see like the parallels here and if we could learn from each other and not go completely different paths. Um, it's interesting that you find the, the RB tree uh, performant the, it's with a branching factor of, of, well, essentially three. Yeah, actually, initially, uh, the idea of splitting these, uh, these uh, three trees was to uh, kind of uh, mitigate the contention because uh, before we used to have uh, only one. And then we actually allocated from on, uh, only one tree, uh, only one that, that was consist of gaps and allocated areas. And then we need to, we had to access to that tree when we allocate and when we uh, deallocate. So, but let me, let me go next. I will show you. Uh, I will explain probably more uh, because since we are talking about free pass, I will explain more about free pass. So uh, here we go with a here we go with a free pass. So on the left side we have a Z CPU context. On the right side we have a drain VMAP work context. So uh, once we once somebody invokes v3, uh, we have an address. 
uh, we need to convert that address into a separate or special zone uh, use, using the formula I showed you before. So you can see that it belongs to number zero. Uh, what we do, we, we log that we lock a Z zone, this particular zone only, because if somebody wants to free in this zone, it does it without any problems. Or here, it does without any problems. And you see, we can serialize. So uh, returning back to CPU zero zone, we take a lock. Uh, we lock a uh, bookkeeping data of zone number zero. We do a simple traversal, find, and do unlink. And then we store into separate data structure, lazily data structure, same CPU, lock it, insert or merge. Here you see that we can merge, here we can insert. And that's it. From V3 side, it's, uh, that's it. Uh, on, on the right side, uh, we have a drain VMAP work context. And this context actually does actual uh, draining or returning back lazily data, lazily free data into global VMAP space, or it's not ha it has not been decided yet. But before doing that, we need to flush TLB. So uh, we just calculate the, the range, mean, max, do the flush. And then next step, final step, either to return it to global VMAP space. I was, uh, I have a prototype. I, I, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing now, uh, I return it now to global VMAP space. But uh, another, another way or approach would be to return it back to, to its own free zone. So it's a pure, pure CPU zone. Basically return back to cache instead of global space. Uh, so yeah. This, yeah, it's, it's pretty much, that's it about V3. So, but main idea is that uh, it's, uh, it's quite good serialized. You see, it can go Z zone, we need to lock Z zone, one user, another user can lock Z zone, another Z one. So next steps. Can I ask uh, you to, to uh, conclude because we are at the top of the session. So just conclude what you, what you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, let's conclude. conclude. So uh, yeah. let's conclude what I have. Uh, you mean conclude this slide or in general? Uh, okay, it seems that you can get more 10 minutes because Mike is just uh, cutting his uh, slot shorter. So, uh, so let's say that you have uh, 10 minutes. Ah, okay. okay. Then uh, let's go to next steps. Uh, I'm finished. I'm finished more or less. So next steps. Uh, I will do it briefly. Uh, first of all, I would like to send out the proposal. I didn't, I haven't done it yet. Uh, I will, I will send out the proposal as a patch set series to community. Uh, then I will provide some uh, results regarding performance difference because uh, the aim the aim is to get uh, as uh, XFS people say they, they, they want to have a maximum throughput. Okay, I will show the difference. And then we can adjust the series based on community feedback or or I don't know, go with, with another solution or something like that. And uh, before questions or ideas, or, of course thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you that I was given a time to give a talk and uh, any ideas, uh, comments or, or concerns, uh, so you're welcome. Uh, Vlad, a question. Essentially, you are, you are pretty much statically fragmenting the entire v-malloc v address, v address space, right? Uh, like. It, if you have uh, 32 CPUs, so you have 32 distinct ranges in, in the VMAP. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yes, yes, I need to mention about this. Yes, uh, actually I have, uh, yes, number of ranges correspond to number of CPUs. But it can be, you can, it makes sense to, uh, to make it identical. Uh, but uh, you can do that, you can, you can make it uh, half less or whatever. 
But, but yes, it makes sense to do them identical, yes. But if, say, CPU zero for some reason, I don't know, loads lots of modules, and then uh, afterwards it wants to vmalloc something that runs on this CPU zero, wants to vmalloc again, it will run out of address space despite having a lot of free address space in uh, other zones, right? Uh, we actually allocate from global heap. And we don't, we don't focus on uh, allocating on particular zone because um, it, makes, it makes even more complicated to find particular zone. I mean, for example, if we are CPU number five and we would like to allocate in CPU number five zone, it's a bit uh, complicated, I mean, from a search point of view. So that's why we don't allocate. If, according to my tests and I, according to my test results, it doesn't make sense at all to do that. We just, we just allocate, allocate sequentially, sequentially, I mean, prefetch sequentially, uh, um, just a uh, chunk, a special chunk with a fixed size, for example, four megabyte, and that's it. And second CPU just allocate, and second CPU allocate also sequentially, uh, same size. Okay, I see, and the idea is, And the idea is to do it sequentially because we don't want to allocate in another kind of uh, zones like modulus, where modulus actually resides or whatever. We don't want to go far, far behind other space. Uh, have a question. So I wonder where uh, do we see this uh, contention in real world like uh, applications? Uh, because we, we are not aware of such issues. So if you can share whether we have seen that in some application, what type of application will be helpful? I can share that. I saw, uh, uh, first of all, it's clear that there is a contention. It depends on how heavily you use vmalloc and how heavily test case is. Uh, for example, on Android devices, we see a kind of good, uh, big traffic uh, when it comes to vmalloc because of video stuff, uh, calling, and, and so on, audio. Uh, uh, but uh, first time I was I was talking, I saw it in uh, LKML community. I saw the patch uh, from XFS uh, people, where they actually showed a perf trace, and they actually uh, complained on Vimala contention. Okay. But Thank I can you. share. I can share. When I send out when I send out a proposal, I I will share all such details. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, uh, I just have a quick suggestion. It's several times you mentioned some uh, configuration tunables or kernel parameters. It, it, I think it would be best if uh, there was some uh, automatic default and it wouldn't require people to decide anything Maybe if there's a tunable for somebody who needs to um, uh, tune it according to their workload, it can be uh, a kernel parameter, as you said, but uh, I think it shouldn't be required uh, for some sensible default just, just to be user-friendly. I see your point, and I agree with your point. Um, uh, yeah, we need to think about this. For example, uh, if, if go ahead. Yeah, for example, if you introduce a config option that will ask for a number, then Linux would probably yell <laughs> at, at mm -hmm. it. So. Yeah, yeah, for at least for 64-bit uh, system, we have uh, quite big, uh, uh, quite big VMAP space. Uh, when it comes to 32-bit system, well, yeah, we are really limited there. Uh, as far as I know, we have uh, only one gigabyte address space. But yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. It seems there are no other questions in the room. So unless somebody online has any questions, then I guess we just thank you for the presentation. And I'm very much with uh, Liam that uh, this seems like a very similar problem that VM a space needs to address as well, so it would probably go to work on that and not end up in two different implementations.
Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Bye.